This week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today. Fans, founders, and insiders like you help us keep the Run, Eat, Drink podcast going. And we thank you for your support. I am Marco Cicero and you are listening to Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast, episode 185. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited about this show. When we played the intro, I was closing my eyes and imagining us back in Anchorage, Alaska. Yes, I could almost feel him tapping me on the shoulder as he blew past us. Yeah. <laughs> finishing up his uh, his half marathon and and we us getting to come in right behind him. Right behind him. Well, not right behind well, him. Well, way back behind him. But next, we came in next. Yeah. <laughs> More or less for a 5K. Yeah. And he ran a half marathon. What, whatever. Half marathon. It was yes. He started ahead of us. I think it's so great that we had the opportunity to save this until this week's show. Well, what's so special about this week's show? Well, pray tell. Yesterday was the Boston Marathon. Normally, it's run in April, mm-hmm. but you know, the last there are no two rules. years. The there last are- the last two years have been full of unexpected twists, turns struggles triumphs calendar adjustments lots of calendar adjustments for us and our fellow runners marco included yes and this past weekend man if you wanted to watch or tune in to a marathon major you had two to choose from yeah chicago and boston this weekend i when you told me that that i didn't realize that was happening yeah and and we were driving in the car and you told me that they were back to back. I was like, no way they did that. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. I I, I mean, there's, I, I understand, you know, all of the reschedules that have had to happen oh. in the last, you know, close to two years now. But man, it's I mean. It's crazy to have them both on the same weekend. Yeah. Isn't it? I, I don't recall them ever. I mean, for all I know, they've done it every year. It's just the first time I had ever heard of it, and I couldn't yeah. believe it. So, I mean, in April, normally you have London and Boston, and then in October you have Chicago. It's they're they're never on the same weekend. As far as I mean, ever since we've been we've become runners, we've been fans of running. They've never been on the same weekend. I've so. never seen it. We have lots. The point is, we had lots of motivation and inspiration from this weekend, including members of the Runcation Nation that we'll get to here in a bit. But yeah, if um, before we get to our shout outs, let's just let you all know that the show intro there is a bit of a hint. Yeah. Because we're going to take you back to Alaska on this week's episode. We told mm-hmm. you guys we had a bunch that we covered and got for you while we were at the Anchorage Run Fest. Because if we were going to go on our first running trip since the pandemic, yes, we were going to go big and, we and then go home. But we went big first. Yes. And then we spent a lot of time in the airplanes going home. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. But we are going to be bringing you more Marco. Yes, he so graciously came on our show on my birthday initially. We yes. we we saw him at the Pasta Feed 
at the first Anchorage Run Fest we went to back in 2019. And we're just so inspired. We wrote back and forth. He's a busy man. We wrote back and forth with him. And finally, months and months later, we're able to get him on the show. And he was so inspiring this time as the keynote speaker at the Pasta Feed at the Anchorage Run Fest 2021. We had to capture some of the best moments of inspiration for the Runcation Nation. Absolutely. And I, I love the fact that every now and then he drops into our live feeds as well. Oh, I know. It's so great. It's so nice. He's such a busy guy. He has three kids. He's oh, he training lives- like a beast and yeah and he just lives three hours up the road from us you yeah. you'd think that we could we could you know connect you know more frequently or more easily but no we have to travel halfway across the globe in order to connect with a gentleman who lives three hours from us yeah and will he ran boston and that's very very significant yes that and we'll talk about that absolutely yeah We're also going to bring you guys an amazing food truck. (laughs) You know how we love food trucks. We talk about it all the time. And I think I I like the idea that we're we're talking food trucks in Anchorage, Alaska, because a lot of people who have never been might not think that they have food trucks up there. I mean, maybe you caught the great food truck race a while back when they were taking the show through Alaska, but (laughs) you might not think of... Food trucks, when you think of Alaska, but they they do have food trucks. And oh, yes. The Grizzly Dogs food truck mm-hmm. is who we're going to be talking about today and some absolutely incredible food. We actually recorded a hot take on a specialty of theirs. Oh, we did. That we're going to share with you. Oh, yes. And they were at King Street Brewing, which is... An Anchorage brewery, and uh, we visited their tap room, had delicious food from Grizzly Dogs, and amazing beer. Maybe one of the nicest breweries we've ever been inside. I mean, the it building was, massive. was enormous. Yeah. And we'll talk about a little bit. You'll hear a little bit more of that because we recorded a hot take uh, there. A hot take there. Yeah. And then we'll maybe expound on that a little bit. Yeah. So let's start with the shout outs. Let's do it. So we, we'll get to Marco and what's amazing about him running Boston on Monday. But the Boston virtual also went on this weekend. And many in the Runcation Nation ran that race. And... Rhonda Lee, who makes our show international, ran it in her hometown and had the support of her friends and family, and she just crushed it. I just want to know if she was able to find a Sam Adams lager and a yeah. you know, Boston lager and some, some baked beans or something afterwards. I don't know. I don't. She didn't post any of that, so <laughs> I'm thinking no. But congratulations to Rhonda Lee and our, and as we said, Chicago also went on, on Sunday, the Chicago Marathon, and fellow podcast host, a host with the most that inspires us, he he inspires us along with his co-hosts, hashtag Scotty G and Ricky and Pam over there on the Be Our Guest podcast. Mike Rallman just crushed Chicago on Sunday. And then promptly crushed a Chicago-style hot dog. We saw the picture. So (laughs) I think at the finish line. And I believe he caught a picture with another member of the Runcation Nation that's been on our show sharing Disney memories that that is Anna of Anna Runs on Coffee. Yes. And of Instagram fame. And Greg of Greg in Orlando, who gives us all the great vegan and vegetarian tips. He ran Chicago. I am just telling you. Wow. And, and uh, another person who did the Boston virtual, but did it as a trail marathon? I, yeah. That's Cheryl. Cheryl. 
of Cheryl's shenanigans. Yes. Oh. A trail marathon. Yeah. That blows me away. It's incredible. What the, the distance in and of itself I, I can't, blows me away. I mean. But now let's let's kick it up a notch and mm-hmm. do it on a trail. Yeah. So she did. <laughs> so congratulations to her. And Jennifer, Jennifer Fink, and Maria Miller did the run Bentonville half. And crushed that as well. I saw some of their photos online. And another Jennifer in the Runcation Nation, Jennifer Hall, also known as Fun Size Jen, did the Baltimore Run Fest Baltimore Marathon. Yes. So Chicago and Boston were not the only marathons going on this weekend. There was a busy, ton, busy. A ton of running happening. So busy. Out there in the Runcation Nation. And we are so proud of all of you. Yes. All of you, uh, regardless of your distance, whether you were doing a, a, a marathon, half marathon, 5K, whatever, whatever. the case may be, if whether it was just you a training walk, run for you. Run, run, run walk, run, I whatever. Saw, I saw one member of the Runcation Nation saying, I, I did my Boston, but I walked almost all of it. But you did it. You did it. That's what matters. A mile is a mile. Miles are miles. Miles Absolutely. are miles. Absolutely. Celebrate and bask in that accomplishment. We are celebrating with you virtually here and on the show. So here's to you. Congratulations, Runcation Nation, on all your accomplishments this week and this weekend. Now, we are going to shout out Marco Chisetto as well. Oh, Big but that's going to lead us right into our run segment because he, yeah, he, like we said, he was out there also running the Boston. Yeah. And he is deserving of that shout out. And so much more. And so much more. But you po- tell the yes. story. He posted, he posted on Instagram and he called it trophy Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And he, he was giving, appreciation and love to his family to all of the organizations and all the people that support him now, in a, accomplishing his goals now there might be some people who are new to the show mm-hmm. who are not familiar with who marco chisetto is who is this guy well marco he is the world record holder in the marathon distance for double amputees in Anchorage, Alaska, when he was in college up there, and he talked about it on our show, a, a great recap was when he was on Jeff Galloway's podcast, You Can Do It, mm-hmm. and recapped his his whole journey through that, through that event of, of getting frostbite and, and losing his legs and getting prosthetics and, and then becoming a world record holder. In the marathon distance for for double amputees, but he he recapped it on our show. He recapped it with Jeff Galloway, and it, he went through all that. And he is one of the most positive people we have ever met. Yeah, I- such an inspiration. You know, he came he came from Kenya to. Alaska, and then back down here to Florida, three hours uh, away from us in, in Orlando to get what he needed once um, once he needed the proper prosthetics to run. Right. And the proper support and the proper therapy and everything that goes into being a world record holder in the marathon distance for double amputees. And, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned how positive he is. And, and a lot of people would say, you know, with that kind of personal tragedy, you would expect or, you know, understand them being negative and having... You would understand you know, it completely. Being angry. And when you you meet him and you you see it, I mean, it comes through. There are just pe- mm. people that, that, that light kind of comes from within and you can tell. And he's one of those people. He's taken a situation... And he's decided how it's going to impact his life. Right. 
in a positive in a positive way and how he can influence others in a positive way and and we got the ch- we got the chance when we were up there we got to see him interacting with kids <sighs> at the at the little family warm up at the Anchorage One Miler yeah and then the kids races and whatnot it was so sweet <sighs> And he's cheering the kids on and high fiving them when they're coming in across the, the finish line. Fantastic. It was just, it was absolutely yes, adorable. Mm. And so. Marco ran, like you said, he ran Boston mm-hmm. Monday. Yes, and, and it was kind of a big deal. He was instrumental in helping bring prize money to that category. That, that he participates in as a dumbbell amputee. And I didn't, honestly, I didn't realize that. Number one, I didn't think, this is kind of weird. I didn't think of him having to be in a different category. He, when you, when you hang out with him, like at the race or, you know, at the, at the, the, the pasta feed or, you know, at, you know, at one of the events. At an expo anywhere. You, you forget about his amputation and you know it's just marco and Mm -hmm. you're you're talking with him i didn't realize that that he would be in a separate category Mm -hmm. and then him bringing attention and and getting what you're talking about the prize purse yeah yeah prize money at boston for and he said to us while we were in anchorage that he wanted to be the first to earn that prize. And he was successful That's, despite challenges on race day. He talked to us about how you can never tell what a marathon, when you cross the start line, you can never tell what that race is going to bring to you. Could be weather conditions. It could be just you you have to overcome your subconscious brain or the monkey brain like jeff says jeff says that subconscious brain that wants you to stop when things get hard and it it just i i he overcame adversity on the race course in Boston to achieve victory because his, he's, I I think I saw in all the reports that somewhere around mile 12, he was having trouble with his prosthetic somehow. That's something else too. I mean, you think about the amount of engineering and, Mm -hmm. and money that goes into, I mean, his prosthetics are performance grade i mean these Mm. are these are not your average you know just walk around prosthetics these these are running blades and Mm. you know and it's something you don't think about but you know you could be a you know person with you know two arms two legs you know 10 toes and 10 fingers and then and you you go across the finish line something could go wrong at any point in the race same thing applies to him Mm -hmm. but it's just a little bit different and it's amazing to me that, that, and that's, that's everybody has challenges. They're yeah. just different. It's just a different, different challenge. Yeah. It's, ch- it's a challenge of a different stripe, a different color. A and different he didn't let it stop him. Circumstance. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So we thought this would be the perfect time to capture a little bit, not, not the whole thing, but a little bit of, what Marco shared with us as the keynote speaker at the Anchorage Run Fest pasta lunch in the pasta feed. That was so much fun and delicious. Oh, it was. It was. The pasta was delicious. The message that he delivered fed our souls. Absolutely. Though. Good way to put it. And inspired us. Now, you have to kind of bear with us on the audio because at some points... It, we were outdoors at this pasta feed. Yeah, between two buildings. We were between two buildings, and uh, th- the space was beautifully set up. But as Marco talked, I didn't even realize it until I went back and I watched the footage and listened to the footage after that 
because I was so into his message of positivity and motivation and inspiration, I didn't realize that the whole entire, almost the whole entire time he was talking, there was a fire alarm in a building like right near us. Yeah, you can hear it in the audio, but you can you it's it's in the background. Mm-hmm. We apologize for that. We uh, hope- honestly, I don't rem- actually I didn't don't remember that happening. So I was with you. I was focused on what he was saying. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it's bear with us on that. It's absolutely worth hearing what Marco's got to say here. I think yes. So shall I play it? Yes. Here is Marco Chisetto. So I lived here for 10 years, originally from Kenya, came to school here in University of Alaska, Anchorage. So 2011 was stuck in a ice a snowstorm. And that's how I became an amputee. And you know, there is that, in, you know, there are incidences, things, phenomena that happens in our lives. And it's up to us sometimes to decide whether you are going to just let an event that happened in your life divine who you are. Or you're going to decide and say, you know what, I'm going to define who I am going to be. As a long distance runner, I tried to switch after I lost my feet to run sprinting but sprinting is not my gig you can even see i got some guns so i tried that but i didn't have enough to sprint so i decided to switch to long distance and that's when everything started going as i had planned so started my first marathon new york 253 then went to boston 242 and this is what is out you know they that's was popularized more than the 237 that I ran in Chicago. So what I have learned from my so many years of running 2018 to today is the power of our minds. As a runner, And as a human being, energy, it's one of the things that we use. We just finished our energy viewing now, but now it will be, how are you going to use that energy? A lot of people don't understand that even getting pissed off at things in life takes a lot of energy. That's why you get so pissed off and then all of a sudden you're like looking for something to drink or a snack to buy then people are like oh this is to calm me down that is not to calm you down you just used so much energy for nothing and your body wants to gain some energy back for you to think rationally so in running you have to be very conservative with how you use your energy and this is a little secret that i want to tell you guys if you want to watch how beautiful and great trails are do it either this afternoon or after your run tomorrow. Don't do so much wandering tomorrow, looking around, finding for a moose and looking for a bear and looking if somebody still have their igloo house standing somewhere. Those ones will take so much energy. Just focus your energy on the running, your breathing, and be positive. Tell yourself good things. Negative thought takes so much energy out of you. Even even a bill that is waiting for you to go pay it and you don't have the money paying it. You are in mile 46 of the 49K and I don't know why someone will run a 40... Oh no, I know why. I, yeah, I was checking if you guys are still listening to me so I said, let me check. I know why someone has to run a 49K. But making sure that you don't think about that thing somewhere in your house waiting for you to fix it try it even right now let's do an experiment think about you scratching that uh, lottery you scratch and win billions but we don't have it here in alaska i think but somewhere else you can do that 
or something really pleasant happening in your life, how do you feel? You feel some energy in you, right? But how about we think about this? It's 1964 here in Alaska, 5 p.m. As I don't know if it was a 9.7 uh, earthquake. Think about that. Like it's about to happen. It's going to happen in one minute. How do you feel? Your body is kind of like, oh my goodness, I don't want to even be here, right? Yes, because you, you know, the way we are made as humans, we are survival uh, animals. We, our brain is an organ, but it's a survival organ. People are like, oh, something happened in me so many years ago and it's still bothering me now. Yes, it is, I know that. But at the same time, your brain does not know your subconscious, I should say. Your subconscious mind does not have a timeline. It doesn't know that this event happened 20 years ago, 100 years ago. Yes, it's just fresh there. It's up to us, up to you, up to me to push that event to the back of your mind and let your conscious mind know that it's today. We just finished a good meal. We're having a good time and who cares about tomorrow? Tomorrow will take care of itself. Think like animals in savannah. For those of you who've gone to a safari in Africa, you don't see zebras going around grazing and going, when is going to be the next time that a lion is going to attack me? But the lions are there. They just enjoy life. If a lion comes and attacks me, well, we'll deal about that then. Let's not pre-think about it now. So how do I wrap this to running? Is in one simple statement, just focus on running. That's about it. There are so many things that running fixes in you. That feeling, I always give this an example. As a student here, we used to come to this bars on Friday evening, drink ourselves to half conscious and go back. And the following day, we had a long run. And I was more tired from the hangover of not doing the right thing and you feel like, why did I even do that? But then when I run, the tiredness that I have is a feeling of fulfillment. I'm like, yes, I want to do this again. I want to challenge myself again. There are so many little nuggets in his talk that that he shared with us that I think you can apply not only to running, but to life, such as the case anytime we talk to him. But he made some really, really great points that I think a lot of people may need right now in the world who are struggling, maybe not in a race or in a run, but also in life. Yeah, I've never been one really for, you know, or initially – the whole finding a metaphor in running, you know, that initially when we started doing this, you know, now more than 10 years ago. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it was just like, yeah. it's just exercise. And then the more I've run, the more I've, I've been running through different times in our lives and things mm. that have happened, mm. uh, to us and and for us and and in all sorts of situations, the metaphor makes sense. And mm -hmm. I love some of the things that he was saying, and I I, I find so much truth. In, and really, one of the very first things he talks about, which is the negativity taking energy. Oh yeah, and I, I see it in in my professional life. I see it in. Uh, just in in my day to day, you know, if 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 I find myself in a bad mood or something, you know, mm -hmm. puts me in that kind of a headspace. Afterwards, I am physically tired, in addition to being emotionally drained, and that urge, like you talked about, when you've mm. when you've had that 
that negative, those negative thoughts and feelings and you want to eat something to make you feel better. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, there's actually science behind that where like your brain's trying to balance some stuff out and want some sugar, you know, it's, it's crazy, but it's true. It's like, I was always told as a kid and then maybe into as I, as I grew up and went through many years in school, how it just, it takes, it, it takes many more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Yes. Right. Yep. I've heard it. Did yep. you, did people not say that to you Absolutely. growing up? We had a poster of that in one of my classrooms. Yeah. It's how right are you? there with hang in there, baby. <laughs> hang in there yeah, with, with, the with the cat. cat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with the cat. I just, and I constantly have to remember that because it is so much easier to latch on to the negative. And maybe that's the subconscious pushing you that way so that you use energy for the negative and then you end up with a different kind of exhaustion that I'm just where you're like in search for the food and to give yourself energy again. Yeah. Because you've spent so much on that type of energy or that type of reaction to whatever has occurred or happened to you. Yeah. And I think, and then it becomes self-fulfilling because then you're, you've, expended all that energy on the negativity you're seeking the food Mm -hmm. to uh, make yourself feel better and thereby refuel your Mm -hmm. brain Um, but then maybe because of that you don't hit a fitness goal or you oh depending on what you eat yeah depending on what you eat or how much of it you eat, you know and then you get upset about that and then it becomes a cycle Mm -hmm. And, and that that's something that's you know i've experienced mm-hmm been there, done that, yeah. checked that, you know, I can check that off my list. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's interesting also hearing him talk about some of these things because, you know, with this challenge that I've been doing, having mm. to read these nonfiction books yeah, and, and a lot of messages carry through kind of regardless of the author. And I mean, they're all, the, I, I, the, some of the books that I've been reading are not really so, Self helps the wrong word. I, I, they're they're nonfiction. A lot of them are you know more towards emotional health or, or, or well being, creating mental toughness. Yeah, you know, kind of gearing towards that. And it's just interesting to hear some common themes come through about what you feed your brain mm. in terms of negative self talk. Yeah, can make such a difference in your overall worldview Mm. your overall well-being and it has physical ramifications for you and a lot of the the, those same things carry through and the things even that i've been reading and toward the end of his talk when he talked when when he talked about his experience in college and the different types of exhaustion that you can feel depending on what you choose to do. The outcome of that activity, like, you know, if you if you get up and you're exhausted from a hangover, which is essentially what he was talking about, going out with friends. I picked up having, on that, yeah. And having, and having <laughs> some drinks, having maybe too many. Maybe too many. Maybe too many. And, and then you, you you wake up with that hangover or that lethargy and it's, it's not, it's a feeling of exhaustion, but it's not a good, healthy, motivating exhaustion. No, it's, you feel completely different. And we'll, let's carry that example forward. I think that most of the folks that are listening to this show at one time or another may have had one drink too many and regretted it the next morning. Mm-hmm. The type of tired or exhaustion that you feel is quite different Mm. than the exhaustion you feel say after a long run it's yeah and he says that about his his running at the end of that you feel motivated like i want to go out i want to do it again feel that sense of 
energy and accomplishment that comes from that kind of exhaustion. Yeah. To drive you forward. And, you know, life is about balance, right? It's, you know, maybe you don't always eat the right things. And you have like, you know, the carb coma, the exhaustion from eating. That's, you know, we've, we talked about that. Ex- exploring and indulging often leads to. It can from time to time. Yeah. Yes. But it's a different type of exhaustion. He's absolutely right that there is a different type of exhaustion. There is an exhaustion from, from accomplishing your goal and or the pride after a tough training run. And how that serves to move you forward towards your goals as opposed to an exhaustion that leaves you feeling stuck on the past and feeling regret and and focusing on things that don't move you forward. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like you feel like one is I earned this Mm -hmm. and the other is I'm having... The, 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 it's the exhaustion you earn versus the exhaustion that you um, are it punishes you. Yeah, yeah. The exhaustion Ex- that punishes exactly. you. Exactly. Versus. I couldn't think of the right word. That's perfect. That's how it. That's how it feels. Yep. Yeah. When I don't fuel my body right before a race, and then I pay for it afterwards, mm-hmm. or like that exhaustion that comes from a hangover, or there are d- absolutely different types of exhaustion that can either drive you forward or hold you back, and you have to think about what's going to drive you forward. And Marco Chisetto is a perfect example of making those positive choices and using the power and harnessing the power of his mind to go further towards goals. I mean, when we were talking to him for the very first time he was on our show, he, he said, you know, I'm working hard on, he, he talked about some goals. Mm-hmm. One of them was getting prize money for, double amputees or amputees that that category at Boston. Right. And it came to fruition. And then he talked to us in Anchorage about how he wanted to cross the finish line first in that category and get that first prize money that was, that had never been available before in Boston. And he did it because he focused on what he wanted to achieve and used everything at his disposal. That doesn't mean that you don't have good or bad, you know, you have good and bad days. Everybody does. Of course. But it's how you redirect and move forward. And I think that's an important lesson for, for runners of all experience levels is that your progression is not going to be linear. No. It's it's not going to be a steady, you're not going to get steadily better stronger, faster from one day to the next. You're going to have ups and downs. Yeah, you you may have setbacks due to to injury. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. You do your best you can to mitigate any of those problems. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the you're going to have, it's going to be overall a trend to improve, but that trend is going to have a lot of peaks and valleys. And it's what you do when you're in one of those valleys and how you turn that around or how you can look back on that and draw strength from it, depending on how you used it to move forward. So, Marco Cicetto, congratulations on your Boston victory and persevering throughout a very tough race for you on Monday. We are so inspired by you. and We are so fortunate, so lucky to have had the chance to hear you again in Anchorage to be on the same course and see you finish that half marathon in Anchorage and for you just to take the time to talk with us on the show and allow us to share your motivational messages on this show. We wish you all the luck, positivity, and amazing excitement in your future endeavors. And something tells me his career is going to be one to watch for some yeah. time to come. Yeah. I don't think, I think the best is yet to come for Marco. Mm-hmm. So he says he's going to be back in Boston six months. Yeah. 
I can't wait. Can't wait. But hearing that audio and thinking back to the amazing lunch that we had there while we were lunching and learning with Marco. <laughs> a lunch and learn. It was like a lunch and learn. So like a lunch and learn. It um, sounds like so businessy. Yeah. It, it, but it did. It, it you know makes me a little bit hungry thinking about that. Yes. And also knowing the food we get to talk about this week. I'm just it was excited. It's indulgent. Now, disclaimer, it's indulgent. Yes, this might be one of those food items where you go, I, I'm, this may not be the best pre-run no. uh, meal to have, but it was no. an excellent post-run meal. Oh, yes. 100%. <laughs> and, and, and maybe you don't have a lot of it. Maybe you split it like we did. Like we did. But it is... Amazing local food from a food truck, from the Grizzly Dogs food truck. And we were lucky enough to find them just outside, right in the parking lot at King Street Brewing. (sighs) So we are going to bring you our recording from inside the brewery, but we're going to be talking about the incredible food from this food truck, Grizzly Dogs in Anchorage, Alaska. Hey, Runcation Nation, we are here at King Street Brewing and we're having amazing beers from inside, but out in the parking lot is an Alaska food truck. Yay! Grizzly Dogs. Ooh! And we got their Grizzly Style Dog, which is a reindeer sausage chopped with peppers and onions and cheese sauce on a toasted roll. Amy, take a bite. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, it is smoky the onions are sweet mm. yeah there's cheddar flavor it's like a cheese whiz yeah mm. so it's basically they've taken a a reindeer sausage and chopped it up and replaced the meat from a philly cheese steak mm-hmm. is what they've done what do you think oh well, let's take a bite let's see what this is all about the bun is nice and soft Instantly, the the sausage, the smoke on, on the reindeer sausage, regardless of where we've gotten it, mm. is prominent mm-hmm. and so good. Mm. Um, this is delightful. And they're using, instead of like onions and green peppers, they're using onions and orange peppers, orange mm-hmm. bell peppers. And red. And reds. So you're getting a nice visual component that you don't normally see in most uh, food trucks Mm -mm. or restaurants for that matter. I like the colorful nature of this dish. Colorful nature and the flavor. Mm -hmm. I am a fan of the reindeer sausage up here. Mm -hmm. It's sweeter than your average sausage. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like. And it's got like that smokiness to it that's just... Mm -hmm. It's smokier than a, like an andouille or a kielbasa. But not as spicy. Mm-mm. It almost reminds me of a smoked summer sausage. A smoky, sweet kind of thing. Oh, this is so good. Mm. I like it. I would have it again. Well, this food truck's killing it. Mm-hmm. You can't miss them. They're super colorfully decorated. Their wrap is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It evokes Alaska. Mm. Come and check these guys out. What an amazing food truck. Yeah. And at a fantastic brewery. Mm -hmm. You will not be disappointed. Grizzly Dogs Food Truck, Anchorage, Alaska. Yum. It's easy to see why the Grizzly Dog is the signature item on this menu. If you haven't taken a look at the episode artwork, (laughs) look at the episode artwork for this week. Oh, yeah. That is just a ooey, gooey, (sighs) meaty, smoky. Comfort food. I. Magic. It really, it really is. And I admit, I am kind of the sucker when we go up there. Like, you know, 
everything, every place you go I know. It tends to have a reindeer item on the menu. I'm like, yeah, give me that. Let me try that. Let me try that. <laughs> this one is definitely a celebratory meal. Not one, like you said, to have pre-race. It's not something oh, it's heavy. you want to have on a daily basis. But I would say you should have or split with somebody at least once. Yeah, and this was so big. Mm-hmm. It really this thing was enormous mm-hmm. uh, in that to go container. Uh, that, I mean, you you can see it in the episode artwork. Oh, it's full, huge, and huge. Honestly, I don't know that I could have finished it by myself. It, it was so good, especially having a tasty beverage with it. So, I mean, oh. you're, you for the money you're spending for ten dollars, which by the way, I mean. I just recently a, at a local food truck here in Southwest Florida have seen entree items north of twenty dollars. Yes. Well, I mean, when you think of now, it's lobster. Well, that's not the food truck I'm thinking. Oh, of. Oh no, so but I was thinking of Mobster Lobster. That you're gonna you're gonna pay for the premium seafood for the premium seafood. Yeah, but. The, I've seen some, some recent food trucks here with items north of twenty dollars, mm. and in Anchorage, Alaska, you're getting reindeer sausage, oh, and a huge and prepped in a huge sandwich for ten bucks. I mean, oh god, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, yes. um, it's good. Link is going to be in the show notes. Of you really need to check them out. I, I this is one of those places that if you're going to be in Anchorage. If you're looking to, you know, check off that that bucket list trip and while you're up there, you're looking for great places to go and, you know, initially maybe food truck, a, a food truck wasn't on your list. It needs to be. I enjoy like even the wrap, the artwork on there. I was going to say it's a, the, the wrap on their truck is adorable. It's, awesome. it, it's got this cartoon grizzly bear. Yes. And then, you know, an American eagle, bald eagle in the background uh-huh. and, you know, mountains and trees and a stream. And, uh, you know, it looks like Alaskan Malamutes in a canoe. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it's adorable. Danny approves. And, yeah, you could hear Danny. She she yeah. definitely approved. Mm-hmm. Um, and the food is just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. So. But before we start telling you guys about the incredible beer... Oh. that we had at the brewery that they were parked outside of. We want to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons of the show who have helped make this travel experience that we're talking about possible. It's it's so true. We we really thank you for all your contributions that have allowed us to resume travel. Yes. In 2021. If you go to patreon.com slash run eight drink podcast, we currently have three levels of monthly support, $2, $5 and $10. Each level has its own special perks and we're going to add to them before the end of the year. Yes. Amy promises. I do. I do. Patrons get right now. Patrons get a special thank you message when they come on board as patrons insiders at the ten dollar level get a look behind the scenes access to exclusive video footage like maybe Mar- the video of marco chasetto's entire address or the majority of it minus a little bit of editing uh, uh actually we got a chance to chat with him one-on-one And our patrons are going to get an exclusive. Extended look at Marco Cicetto? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Sign me up. He was so gracious with his time and and gave us an extended interview that we will share with the patrons. The insiders at the $10 level. And, uh, I mean, patrons, they also get exclusive tastings of recipes of our favorite food and beverage that maybe don't make it into episodes right a little bit of extra extra flair extra content Mm -hmm. for them our show will always be free but if you want more of the runny drink podcast and you want to support us long term Check out patreon.com slash Ronnie Drink Podcast. And hey, listen, Podbean users, just tap on the reward button at the top of the Podbean app. You can become a patron. All the same levels are right there at $2, $5, and $10. 
And Same when we, perks. And when we have the new levels, those will be there too. Mm-hmm. Same perks. You don't have to leave the Podbean ecosystem. As always, we thank you all for all the ways you support and continue to support the Runny Drink Podcast. Okay, so let's talk drinks. Oh, yeah. We were I'm there. at this Ready. amazing two-story Three stories. Three brewery. stories. The, they said the third story is often used for special events. Yes. This place was gorgeous. Um, we're going to talk about it here a little bit you know, live from the... Uh, you mean in the hot in take. In the hot take, yeah. But what a beautiful... As Mike Rallman would say. <laughs> in the hot take. Mm. Yeah, I could get, I get my, the Mike Rallman recording voice. I don't have it. Oh. But the... The building, the facility was great. The The fact that you could look down on the brewing floor, you know, and like check it. I mean, not much to look at when you're watching beer and tanks, but, you know, just kind of cool to see it. And then the view out yeah. the window and oh, all that. And then the mountains. Again. Cloud cover. Sometimes when we travel, I get surprised. You know, I never in a million years expected to find some of the best Mexican food of my life in Kentucky. True. And I never expected to find a killer citrus IPA in Alaska. Mm. But here we are. Yeah. And some of the nicest people. Yes. Yeah, at the, King Street Brewing. The staffing, the staff was amazing. So I think that this is going to be one of my favorites that we've been to in a travel show. Probably, uh... Well, it's one of my favorites in the last year of all of our travel. It's, well. You see what I did there? Okay, but (laughs) define travel. (laughs) It's my favorite brewery we've gone to outside the state of Florida in the last year. Is it now? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, like we had a whole bunch of moonshine in Tennessee, so. That's a distillery, not a brewery. Exactly. Exactly. There's so there a, you there's go. A difference. There you go. Okay. So I see. Um, shall we play our audio? Yes. Our hot take. Let's go. Okay, Runcation Nation. We are at yet another location here in Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. We have moved on. This train is rolling. It can't be stopped. We're at King Street. King Street Brewing in Anchorage, Alaska, which is remarkably very close to Anchorage Brewing. Like right down the road. Like right across the parking lot, almost. Mm-hmm. Like Super close. And you have started with their flagship beer. You asked what their flagship beer was. I did. I wanted to get something that was, I wanted to know what they're known for. Mm. And this is an IPA, 6% ABV, 60 IBU. Oof. Yeah. You'll experience a hop symphony when drinking King Street's IPA, a pronounced but pleasant tangerine and passion fruit aroma opens the door for a complex mix of orange, grapefruit, floral, and spicy flavors that come in waves. This beer finishes clean and its medium body will leave you ready to enjoy another. Interesting. Is, is that true? Well, this is a, a deep golden color, almost an amber. Um, it is clear, so we get no, no haziness on it. This has what I would call a moderate carbonation. On the nose, I'm getting things like um, grapefruit pith, kind of is what I'm, I'm smelling, mm-hmm. but also a sweetness, like maybe, maybe like that grapefruit peel or pith has been candied. Ooh. And <clears throat> that is deceptive, I think. So I'm curious. Um, yeah, and by the way, as we're drinking this, we are sitting on the second floor of this brewery. It's huge. We're looking out over the brewery operations to uh, one side, and mm-hmm. on the other side, we're looking out across this beautiful mountain vista on this cloudy day where the clouds have kind of sunk down to become fog in the upper levels of the clouds. It yes. is so gorgeous for a rainy day. Yeah. So let me try this. I, I could be, dis, you know, whatever I tell you right now might be influenced by the view. I'm just saying. Huh. It's beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Definitely citrus up front. Moderate to heavy carbonation. 
Yeah, it's uh, surprisingly sweet, mm -hmm. but not not a dessert beer. Just okay. the bitterness is tempered, and you get kind of an aroma, a little bit of a, a sweet aroma to it, mm. with a little bit of a bitter finish. Mm. But this is not unpleasant at all. I think that uh, I'm very surprised. But they said that they, they jokingly said that this is the beer that paid for the building we're in because they distribute this across the state. It's a citrus IPA. It is, in spite of the, it not being hazy. Yeah, it's not hazy, citrus, a little bit of bitterness on the end, very refreshing. Pleasant drinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. Again, not an IPA guy. No. But enjoying the heck out of that IPA. Right. Now, you went totally dark. You went Salted caramel stout. Oh, there's a theme developing here in our tastings. 5% ABV, zero IBU. Zero IBU. Yeah, there's no description. It just says caramel, dark, creamy, salty, smooth. Tell us more. Well, it's not see-through. It's totally dark. It is. Lighthead. Sweet, but not overly sweet. Like you wouldn't call this a dessert beer? Not a syrupy body at all. Okay. Um, Our beer tender actually made a point of saying that. Yeah, that it's lighter than a normal stout would be. Mm. Yeah. I get some dark chocolate and coffee notes. And uh, How about the caramel? I, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's good beer. On the nose, I get the caramel. Yeah. But I get the impression you don't get a lot of it on the flavor. No. Hmm. Not that that's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I like a stout. More carbonated than I expected. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's actually very good. Mm. But again, it's um, the caramel's kind of the supporting cast member, mm -hmm. not the star of the not show. Totally up front. That's it's okay, not bad. Though. I like it. Would you get a pint of that again? I might try their other offerings because this is so good. It's not caramel. It's it's a more chocolatey kind of stout, uh, stout, so. It's like a salted Rolo. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So maybe I'll try some more of their offerings. This is good, but I might call it a salted chocolate stout. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we will file our suggestions with the folks downstairs. I doubt that, <laughs> sincerely. But that said, you would get you, you like it enough to yeah. drink that pint and either try, try some other stuff, mm -hmm. but not because you don't like that. For sure, no, I I totally like it. I just think it's I don't get a whole lot of caramel off it. Okay, so fair enough. Well, guys, that's our first take from King Street Brewing. We'll be back with more. Yeah, I will have you know that I enjoyed that beer, even though I didn't get a whole lot of caramel you off, were searching the off the flavor. You were searching hard for the caramel. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was, ve it was very good. I liked it. And I liked the variety on their menu. And I would return and oh, yeah. have additional offerings. If we were staying in Anchorage longer... I would have gotten from their case to take back to the room because we were leaving the very next day. We were. Yeah. yeah. So I would, I would have gotten a, a couple more cans of different styles that we didn't try to maybe split. Right. And, and see what their other styles had to offer because what we tried their their flavors were so strong, and I mean that they were so good. 
Yes. And and well put together. Yeah, I know that you were you were thinking yours was going to be like a caramel bomb with a little bit of chocolate. It ended up being the opposite. Yeah, and that's okay. It was the aroma, you were right, of the caramel. But then the chocolatey and the coffee notes mm-hmm. in the body in the in the lighter body. And I was expecting, I don't know, I don't know exactly what I was expecting. I mean, the closest thing I could liken that beer that I had to is maybe Bromosa by Big Storm, but it's not not as, not as um, sweet. Mm -hmm. It had just a little bit of sweetness to offset the bitterness. Mm -hmm. So they, they were doing a good job of playing that balancing act there. So it, it it was more subtle, kind of like yours, more subtle. Yeah, but very very pleasant. Um, and mine was potent. <laughs> it takes talent. Well, so was mine. So I mean, I don't, I can't remember what the ABV was, but now think of it. I don't even know. <laughs> but you know, mm-hmm. it was they were good. Yes, and I would go back. Well, you don't have to threaten me with a good time, I and. Know. This may not be our last time going to Alaska in person. It's definitely not going to be our last time visiting Alaska on the show. We are going to have another flashback at some point in the not too distant future because mm. we have more to tell you about and show you from the great white north. Yay. However, this does bring us to the end of <sighs> yet another episode of the Running Drink See how Podcast. I, saw. I know. Audibly. <laughs> So everybody can pick up on that. We're sad about it ending. Yeah. Just another congratulations to Marco. You are an inspiration to all of us in the way that you live your life, in the way that you run races. And I just can't wait to see you do it again and to see you in person again. And I'm also going to extend a congratulations to the members of the Runcation Nation who are doing their races. You guys keep us motivated. We love you guys and Mm -hmm. what you're accomplishing out there. Please continue to share that with us. If you've got a shout out that you want us to know about so that we can celebrate you on the show, let us know. Shoot us a message in social media. We're on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and we're everywhere Mm -hmm. or Go old school and just shoot us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. That's old school. Info at runeatdrink.net. Yes. So you can go old school with an email or you could give us a call. Yes. At 941-677-2733. That's 941-677-2733. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us who you are where you're from, what we're shouting you out for, and we'd love to play your message on an upcoming episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And if you're shy and you don't want to shout yourself out and you want to shout out another member of the Runcation Nation, feel free Absolutely. to do that as well. We're all about supporting each other here. Yes. So thank you so much for listening, for joining us on your long run, your commute to work cleaning around the house, wherever you are. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe, stay well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.